Hey everyone, the professor here, and welcome to today's full crude oil analysis video, getting you ready for the Sunday market open. Now today, we're gonna to be covering everything to do with crude oil. I'm gonna walk you through every time frame to help you succeed. And if you stay until the end, I'm also going to do a bonus analysis for those of you that enjoy trading natural gas. We're looking at some pretty good opportunities with natural gas as well. So I don't want to delay this. Let's go ahead and jump right into the chart and let's begin to review. And as we always do, we are going to start at the current monthly chart. Now we are winding down in the month of February. Okay. So for now, what we could see is that this has been our high. I'm going to go ahead and remove these previous drawings. This has been our high over the last few months, okay? And then for February, this has been our low, okay? So if you're looking at this on a smaller scale, we're looking at about 79.27 to the top side and 71.70. Now keep in mind the chart that I am using is up here located in the upper left-hand corner. So again, please adjust your prices based on your chart or the platform that you are using more importantly, the price action should be the same. Okay, so when we go over to the weekly chart, let's take a look at what happened, okay? Because last week within February, okay, something interesting happened where we went back up towards our high of the month and we also went into our low of the month, okay? So there was our high and there was our low. So by looking at what happened over the course of the past week, right, we can see here that we closed um, just a little under what we had done on the previous week, okay? So that's important to remember, and I'm going to be getting back to that here uh, in just a little bit. So on a weekly time frame, okay, on a weekly time frame, uh, this is where we are currently sitting. So we've got to still understand that as we look at the weekly time frame, right, we want to go ahead and keep these little areas here marked because again that is the high and the low that we will focus on okay the high and the low that we will focus on okay because i'm going to tell you where i think we are going uh with crude oil as we move a little bit deeper uh into the actual video so that is kind of our parameter so now what we like to do is we like to go ahead and work from this place right here. So this is now where we start going a little bit deeper uh, into our analysis here. So as we go now into our day time frame, right, this is a very, very important piece right here. And again, I just want to give a huge uh, shout out to you know all of the members in our trading club who've had so much success trading crude oil with our constant updates. And again, doing our 20 pip or 20 tick challenge, depending if you're on the Forex side or the future side, because we have many Forex and future side. And it's about being consistent. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go a little bit deeper into the actual uh, video today. So this daily candle right here gives us a lot of clues because this daily candle closed below the previous three daily candles that were here, okay? So when we look at this area right in here, okay, we see that we now have a for sure closure that was closed. This is leading a little bit into where I believe we are going to be headed with crude oil in the short term, okay, in the short term. So again, basically what happened here, and this is where we were setting up for our initial entry here, let me grab a brush, is we had seen this teacup pattern forming. And then when it was a teacup, we were able to sell this handle. Not only were we buying from this level, then we nicely sold from this level as well. And the way I kind of like to relate to this area right in here, and I'll remove this real quick, and then I'll put it back so you can see it. The way I kind of like to refer to these areas right in here, and I, we talk about this 
uh, in the trading club all the time is, you know, you can only come to a door so many times to knock. And if someone doesn't open the door, you eventually are going to leave, right? You are going to walk out. And that's exactly what happens with price action. That's why it's so important to understand the dynamics of price action and what it's telling you. And in this case here in the chart, as we go back to it, you can see that price had come back down or back into this area numerous times on a day time frame and continued to reject it. So as we drop to a lower time frame, this becomes a lot easier to read versus the daily time frame because most traders are not trading on the daily time frame. So if you can understand the higher time frame dynamics, because this is where the large institutions are trading, this is why we just did a full training inside of the app about how to exit trades and why you've got to understand where the larger institutional trading is happening. OK, so as we look at this daily chart here, now we begin to develop a game plan for going into the actual week ahead with crude oil. So we leave this as our high. OK, and we leave this as our low for now. And now we begin to blueprint where we are going uh, with crude oil. And that's going to be uh, super, super important. So now when we drop down to the eight hour chart, here we can begin to see that rejection that had happened on so many occasions. And again, so important, so important to understand that the market gives you clues. And so we always talk about in our trading community about looking to your left because the left is going to give you clues, okay, meaning what price action had previously done in the shorter time frame is going to help you look at the markets a little bit better. It's going to give you possible entries. And also, more importantly, it's going to help you get out of the market before it reverses on you. And I think this was, you know, a great example, right, that many traders had probably entered long positions here. But had you looked over to the left, you would have realized that this supply and demand zone, every time we came to this area of resistance, right, price pulled away. So taking a buy here would not have been a good situation because you failed to understand the dynamics of this zone on a bigger time frame. So that's the constant trading and education that we are constantly doing inside of our club to give members the opportunity to be more successful. And it doesn't matter whether you are a short-term trader or a long-term trader, these are basics that you really, really have to understand uh, in order to uh, understand market structure. And we'll be doing a lot more trainings on market structure. Hey, real quick, if you're getting some value on this video, definitely hit the like button. If you're brand new, uh, subscribe, share this video. And I encourage you to check out theprofessortrades.com and join us inside of our trading community. So as we get back into uh, the dynamics here now, now we wanna start looking at the next levels. So we are going to begin to mark up these areas based on previous market structure, okay? And we are in a very critical area in that market structure right here on a bigger time frame. Because we can see here what price has previously done in this area, it's acted uh, as but mostly as support, but in this case, other than a small false breakout, it was also resistance. So we've got to look at this current area uh, that we are currently at here. So as we begin to mark this up, what I would like for you to do is to go ahead and pause this video if you need to, bring up your charting platform, look for this price action if your chart doesn't match exactly the same chart that I am using, and then go ahead and as I walk you through a few more zones, crucial, trust me, support and resistance is 90% of what we do with some FIB levels that we'll show you in just a minute. You want to make sure that you are marking up your charts. So feel free to just copy what I'm doing and have your charts marked up as well. Okay. And a huge shout out to all of our international members uh, who are watching these videos. I do my best to slow it down for you. And again, all the subtitles 
should be populating the low for you as well. So let's go ahead and jump now into our eight hour chart. And the first thing I want to do is mark up some of these distant levels. And again, we talked about looking over uh, to our left for, for when we see these areas that give us both supply and demand zones. Okay. And as we move down on the different time frames, we tweak these based on our intraday trading. Okay. So as we can see here, these are going to be our main levels that we are focusing on on this eight hour time frame. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and extend this a little bit more as we go into the week. So we are ready to rock it as we always do. So now that we have our eight hours kind of marked up in areas, we are going to bring this down to our four hour chart. We are going to begin to look at price action. And I like to use these circles, um, price action to see what is happening at this four hour mark. And so this is where I can kind of put this aside for a minute and I can tweak the zone. I can move it down a little bit just to kind of take a look at where we are at. Because if you notice here, the actual wicks, which are very important, came down a little bit further than what the eight hour had shown up here. So we've got a wick here and we've got a wick down in here. We also have these equal lows that are sitting right here. Now, I want to bring your attention to the area focused right in here. Okay. And when you look at this last candle on this last four hour candle before the market closed on Friday, right, we see a minor liquidity grab right in here. And in case you don't know what the liquidity grab is, when you see these large candles, okay, these are institutional candles, you normally will see a wick come up to at least 50% of that candle because there is institutional money. Remember, they buy and sell at the same time. So they come up to close some of their positions and then they continue moving the market down. Same thing here. They came up and grabbed some money and then they began to move the market down. So based on what we're seeing here in this particular section here, right, begins to lead me to the point where I believe we are going to go further down in the market. Uh, and then this next area will be crucial whether we are going to break that market and continue downward or we are going to rise again from that area of support. So as we kind of look at this area here, right, we understand we have our zones marked up. And again, if you do not have these zones marked up, you probably want to go ahead and pause this video and get that marked up before we move on to our next time frame. So now we're going to drop over to our one hour. And now on the one hour, we begin to bring in focus what price has done in this previous area. So I'm going to kind of move this. Okay. And you can, we're going to start all the way back here. We can see here that we came to this uh, support zone. We came back up to this uh, resistance. We came back to support. And again, this is all that we've been doing inside of our trading club all of last week, right? Buying from support, selling at resistance, buying from support, selling at resistance, buying from support. And then now we are here now at this area. And of course, you know, we love to use tools like the Fibonacci to just give us even a better entry inside of our area. So I'll give you this one cell example. For example, we took this from this little gap area here that we talk about all the time, okay, between the 61 and the 88. So we look for those Fib levels to actually pinpoint an even better entry or so that we don't miss the entry as well. And we do a lot of in-depth training on this uh, weekly inside of our trading app. So this area right in here, I want to go ahead and grab this and make it a little bit smaller, uh, is why I believe even though you, we see now here on a smaller time frame, now we are going to begin to mark up these areas on a smaller time frame. Okay. Because literally what happened here in this area even though we did not fully uh, come back to a zone, we understood that there was a FIB level here that we were looking at. And again, it was that same FIB level that we talk about all the time between the 61 and the 88.6. And so that is why we ended up buying before price came all the way back down 
to support level because we were going on a better opportunity to go in at this fib level based on everything we have done currently with crude oil. So now here on the one hour, we start to plot smaller areas of support or resistance. I like to change up uh, those colors so they're a little bit different. So you see here that on a bigger time frame, this is major support, right? This is major support. But on a smaller time frame, like the one hour, we had previous bounce here. We had a previous bounce here. So the mistake that again we're we know we hope not to make and for people to make is like this would not be necessarily a point that you jump in into a sell area, right? Because we now know if by looking over to the left that this area was a previous bounce off of support on a smaller time frame. So I'm going to tell you how we play this uh, in just a few minutes as we get a little bit deeper into the video. So understanding the levels now on a smaller time frame will help you make better decisions. So we begin to plot these levels now for our intraday traders, for our scalpers, for people like myself. Uh, I want to know where these areas are on smaller time frames. So basically what I like to do is I like to trap price. And let me go here. I like to trap price between levels because it is so much easier to trade from level to level to level than to try to hit a home run. Okay. So we're currently running, for example, our 20 pip challenge. I'm giving folks 20 pips a day uh, with crude oil and with other uh, indices and gold as well. And some Forex pairs to help them grow a separate account into a six figure account over the course of the next few years. So we're only grabbing 20 pips or 20 ticks in those separate accounts. So we don't need these large moves, right? We literally are just looking for a bounce to give us 20. For example, that small bounce right there is came all the way up to the zone to be 95 pips or ticks. We're only looking for 20. That's it. We just need a wick that to basically retrace up and we have our 20 ticks or 20 pips. So that is why we're seeing our success rate above 90% uh, in the club is because if you're doing the 20 pip or 20 tick challenge, we're focusing in on small moves to help you grow your account over a duration of time. That's how you truly stay in the ball game. And again, I think that's something that's so important that a lot of people need to hear. If you want to sustain trading, Trading gets a bad rap because of people's failures and they will talk about their failures because they didn't have a plan. They didn't have a structure. But you know what's more important than a plan and a structure and understanding risk management is being around a positive community, is being around a community that is only here to see you succeed, right? Not about selling courses, not about selling uh, cohorts and any of that stuff. It's about helping you succeed. And I think that's why our community because I always tell our members, it's not my community, it's our community. We have over 170 awesome trainers thus far. We've only been, we only launched two months ago and we've got some great folks in there who are sharing charts, sharing trades, and that's what will sustain a trader to be successful over a long period of time. Because trading is hard, absolutely. But trading in a community where your best interest is at hand will make your journey much, much easier. And so that's why I think we're seeing so much success inside of our community. So let's now begin to break down where we are at and let's go ahead and get ready for Sunday market open. We do want to start with our gap, which is going to happen right in here. And so now that we are at this gap level, we understand, I'm going to talk a few minutes about the gap and what happens traditionally when there is a gap created, okay? And a gap is nothing more than when a price opens on Sunday. If there's a difference in price between the close price on Friday and the open price on Sunday, whatever that difference is, that is considered a gap. So let me show you an example, okay? If we open the market on Sunday with a candle up in this area, and I'll make it red to stay consistent, right? If we open up a candle, then the difference between where price closed 
okay, and where price is, that is considered the gap. Vice versa, if the price opens down here, and we'll make this, actually, that should have been the red candle. I'm going to make this a green candle. Sorry about that. Uh, if the price opens down here, okay, uh, bearish, then the difference between where price opens and where price closed on Friday is considered the gap. And again, same thing with this. The price opens higher and the price closed here on Friday, that is considered the gap. So how we trade these gaps are very easy. I like to see at least a 50 point difference if I'm gonna take a gap, okay? Now we know that the gap closed based on this chart at 76.55. So for me, the gap candle has to drop down into about 76 or over 77 for me to take a gap trade. Now, here's a couple of things that you wanna consider regarding the gap. Not all gaps close within a few minutes, depending on how wide the gap is. Usually when the market opens, it runs away from the opening, from the closing price on Friday. So don't jump right in, check your spreads with your brokers. Many brokers will increase the spread during the first hour of trading and may not be beneficial for you to get into that trade right there. So I wait for at least 30 minutes and then I look to see if it creates a 50 point spread or higher. If it does, I enter my first position with a much smaller lot or contract size. Why? Because this trade can stay open for a few hours, for a few days, or for a few weeks. But the good news is in most cases, and everything I've gone back and looked at my journals over the last eight years, for the most part, crude oil over 80% of the time closes within a few hours, okay? So that 20% is left or may hold over to London session or even into the next day. But for the most part, crude oil closes within a few hours. But even that being said, don't throw the whole bank at a gap trade. You don't want to be in massive drawdown. You should look at a Sunday gap as like extra whipped cream on your favorite dessert, right? You'll make some profits off it, but you don't want to jeopardize your account for it, okay? So again, make sure that you are not over lot sizing when you are uh, trading the gap, if there is a gap. And again, this is something that we will do uh, inside of our community. We actually will jump in a live analysis in the app, which is also known as our community. And so I live stream inside of there for those members. So we do that every evening uh, during the course of the week. But on Sundays, we jump on at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we look for gaps, not only on crude oil, but for natural gas, Gold, US 30, NASDAQ, SP, and some of the other Forex pairs as well. So that's the way we are going to approach uh, our gap trading. Now, I told you at the beginning of the video, I wanted to kind of go over uh, what I was looking for for long term. And so I want to kind of do that now. I want to go ahead and go back to the chart. I want to go ahead and just wipe this off. And again, if you're a, a member, of the club here, don't worry, I will be saving these charts. And obviously you have access to all of my charts inside of our app. So I'm gonna close this up real quick. I'm gonna go over to the eight hour candle, okay? Now, this eight hour candle here, we talked about earlier, okay? And again, let me go here and let me get rid of this. Okay, sorry about that. Our eight hour candles here uh, did close below this previous eight hour candle that was here in this area. Okay. So, you know, I do believe that we are going to target uh, the 75 hundreds. I believe we're going to target these equal lows that are sitting right here at about 7551. Okay. I believe that's where we are going this week on crude oil, whether it's at the beginning of the week or at the end of the week, I believe we're going to target the mid 75s on crude oil. Unless something dramatic happens and there is some type of obviously spectacle, right? Some fundamental newsworthy that has to drive price up because that's the way they want to take it. I believe we're going to see lower prices with WTI, with crude oil this week. I think we'll target the 75s. I'm not even going to put down the 74s are not reachable, but for right now, I always remind our members we trade what we see and not what we feel. So we'll continue to do that. But I think once that eight-hour zone is broken, 
that we just talked about, I think we're definitely going to see price heading into the 75s based on this crude oil chart. But again, look at your price action within your actual community. So I hope you got some value on crude oil. I'm now going to be jumping into natural gas. So if you want to stay for the remainder of this analysis, I hope you get some value. If you're leaving us at the end of this crude oil analysis, I hope you got some value. You can definitely hit that like button for me. I would appreciate it if you're brand new, subscribe. But if you're sticking around, let's get into our analysis for natural gas. Okay, so let's start with our natural gas analysis. And as you can see here, I still have our charts marked up uh, from the trade alert that we gave our members in the app uh, because I had seen that we had obviously had this bullish action, but we were coming back up to a strong area. And again, we took a sell from this area at about 1.85, and we have currently been dropping since. I'm going to be wiping this out, and I'll go over it just a minute. So again, congratulations uh, to all of our members who grabbed natural gas for those traders who trade natural gas. And we are coming to another critical area. So let's go ahead now and remove this. And as you can see here, I've actually got a couple of alerts waiting to go off to notify our members. So we are currently sitting on the eight hour chart. Okay. If we kind of take a look over at natural gas, this has kind of been our floor uh, over the past uh, few weeks. Let's go ahead and change that to white. Keep it consistent. Okay, that has been our floor. Now, if we go over to our day candles and we go here and we kind of widen this out a little bit and we bring this all the way back in and we pinch it, we can see here, right, that we are kind of in no man's land, right? We have not been this low where my alerts are at since March of 2020 and July of 2020. So that's why I have alerts there. Okay, now that was the actual floor. Okay, this price here, about 15281, which I'm going to mark up right here. Okay, and I'll make this white. That was ultimately the floor. And then we had another floor right here where the alert is actually sitting. So as we move back now down into the analysis, you can see that we are uh, heading back towards that floor, right? Are we going to eventually? Uh, break that all-time low of that 1.522 based on that chart. So that's what we have to look at, okay? I'm expecting probably a huge gap. Natural gas has these crazy gaps uh, that happen all the time, okay? So on a Fibonacci level, right, on a Fibonacci level, let me grab a Fib retracement, right, on a Fibonacci level, this is why I have that area kind of marked up because we are kind of in that crucial area that we talk about all the time. But when it comes to natural gas, the way this sucker moves, right, I am going to wait, and that's why I have alerts, to see if we can get a little bit deeper, closer into a retest of that bottom zone one more time before I even consider any type of buying opportunity, okay? So this is where we have been looking at. This is the price action on a eight-hour chart. Okay, so they came back down to grab that liquidity that we talked about inside of our group. Okay, when they had this massive push up last week, okay, a lot of institutional money moved that market in natural gas after basically dropping for super, super long time. We still have gaps up in this area that have not been filled. That gap was created back in January. Okay, January 12th of this year, and they have not yet closed that gap. So eventually they are going to go close that gap. But of course, we can't predict when that is going to happen. So on natural gas, we are going to be looking at this area to see if possibly we can get another bounce from this lower area back in here. Okay, let's see if this is going to give us the very inverted W pattern back up. Okay, as a possibility, but price is going to react down in this area. Of course, we just don't know if price is going to react here, 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 or where price is going to react in this scale. So as we wait for price to come down, for me, since natural gas is kind of like an extra you know, commodity 
that I like to trade every once in a while, I wait for what is for me the ideal situation and I pass that on to our members as well. So for me, I'm going to wait to see if we come back down, hopefully into the 1.5s, okay? Hopefully it's a 1.5s because natural gas is one of those uh, particular trades that if I get it, great. But if I miss it, no, no foul, right? Because crude oil is our bread and butter, gold and a few others. So this is like extra pudding. So if it comes to us, great. If it doesn't come to us, I don't chase natural gas. So that's why I have these alerts in place. Once this alert goes off, which will probably go off with the gap today, I'm assuming, unless we gap up uh, and we fall down in these places, then I begin to look for a good price point that I'm willing to swing trade all the way back up. Okay. So I'm going to be waiting for price to come into these levels on natural gas before I do any buying of natural gas. At the same time is I'm not going to jump into a sell on natural gas here either because of where these fib levels are located. Okay. So I'm not going to jump into a sell. I'm going to wait uh, to jump into a buy once we get down to these lower levels. The sell for us and for me had actually happened earlier when we were there. Okay. So that already had happened. Now we're looking for the buy. Okay. And again, congratulations to many of our members who've been selling from these points right here, right? Just marking up support and resistance and continue to hold their sales for a long duration of time. Okay. That is not my DNA as a trader, but we've got plenty of other traders who've been holding this sell for quite a long time and extremely, extremely profitable. I like to grab and go. This was the first sell that I had taken up in this area once I saw this price retrace back down. I'm sorry, retrace back up into this key level right here. So we're waiting for buys in this area. And again, just like everything else, if you are a part of our trading community, you will get that alert the moment I get my alert because I share all my trades across any platform, whether it's Forex, whether right EJ, GJ, whether it's gold, indices, US 30, NASDAQ, when I get into a trade or I look to enter a trade or I get my alert, you as a member are notified. So again, I want to thank all of you for uh, watching this full video. If you got some value, you know what to do. Hit the like button. And if you stayed to the end, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And I actually have a request for you. I'm trying to find my template here. But anyways, if you got some value today, I want to say thank you for watching today's video. And don't forget to uh, leave a comment down below. I get back to you as quickly as possible with any comments or questions that you may have. Secondly is you can definitely impact the life. I was shown trading eight years ago by somebody who shared it with me. You can do the same thing today by grabbing the link of this video and sharing it out on your social media sites to maybe introduce someone to the world of trading. Trading is very profitable if you do it right, if you do it over time, if you don't hit the home run. And so that's why our trading community is finding so much success because we're changing old habits, especially after the old habits that I learned after failing my first three and a half years, but I stuck with it. I got with the right people, the right group, and that's what changed it for me, okay? And to finish this video, don't forget, whether it's Sunday, Monday, or any day of the week, you have the opportunity to be kind to someone today. It could be a loved one. It could be a text message, a phone call, an email, however that looks for you. Reach out to someone today that you know needs to be heard from and say, hey, I'm sorry, or apologize, or just be kind. Buy a cup of coffee, say hello to a stranger, shake someone's hand. And if we can act with more acts of kindness, that usually is replicated times seven back to you at some point. So be kind to someone today. Even if you feel you weren't wrong, be kind, apologize, and let's make the world a better place one community at a time. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you inside the app or we'll see you on our YouTube channel. Have a great weekend. Have a great week trading. If you have any questions, drop them below in the comments, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching.